What happens when you take awe-inspiring rock formations, snow-capped beautiful mountains, green rolling hills, rivers, and throw all that in with an abundance of natural wonder? What you get is the state of Utah. Of all the countries I've ever visited and all the travel videos I've ever made, this video is going to be the most personal. That's because Utah is the place that I was born and raised. It's a place that means a great deal to me and a place that I find more beautiful than any other place on earth. Utah is often called the Beehive State. It's because it's very well known for its industriousness and sense of community. The people here are very nice and they just happen to live in one of the most beautiful spots on earth. Now you may not figure this, but Utah is a place with significant natural diversity. I could show you two pictures of two wildly different landscapes and surroundings and you would never figure that both of these places are in the same state. In many ways, the sights and the beauty within the state of Utah can be broken down into two specific areas, the northern part of Utah and the southern part of Utah. In the more famous southern part of this state, you have signature national parks. There's a uniquely beautiful desert landscape that is a signature element of the southern part of Utah. You know exactly where you're at, whether it's a slot canyon, a desert landscape, or some sort of awe-inspiring rock formation. In contrast, the northern part of Utah is known for its snow-capped mountain peaks, the Wasatch Mountain Range, world-class ski resorts, green rolling hills, rivers, waterfalls, beautiful hiking trails, crystal blue lakes. It offers an excellent but an equally beautiful contrast from what you're seeing in the southern part of Utah. The northern part of Utah is also home to the state's major population center, so most of the folks who live in Utah will live in the northern part of the state. Now, whether it's in the north, the south, or anywhere in between, travelers who come to Utah to explore its beauty will be richly rewarded. There are a lot of hidden gems in the state of Utah, and I'm looking forward to not only showing you how beautiful they are, but how to get there. And I know that that's sometimes at odds with a lot of people who think that some beautiful sites are not worth exploring for the masses, because the more people who go there, 
the more people who are going to litter, the more people who are going to disrespect the spot. There seems to be a gatekeeping Instagram community who wants to show you a picture of a place, but not necessarily show you how to get there. I'm going to go ahead and give you credit and assume that if you are a traveler who does want to come to these spots that are more under the radar in Utah, that you'll do so with a respectful attitude because it gives you a chance to view some very beautiful sites that are not in any guidebook, they're not in any tourist video, and they're not in any video on YouTube. The truth is, no one has any right to tell you where you can and can't go. We should be open and welcome for other travelers, especially who wanna to come to places like this place, my home, Utah, to come and appreciate the beauty. None of us are gatekeepers and none of us are owners of this beauty. So one of the things I'm excited to do is show you exactly where you can find some of these beautiful spots so that you can come here and enjoy it yourself. Utah is a big and beautiful place. For me, it's the most beautiful place on earth and I'm looking very much forward to showing you why. Let's go and explore the Beehive State. This is Utah. Located in western Utah is a place called the Bonneville Salt Flats, and this is one of the most uniquely beautiful natural locations in the entire state of Utah. There's a wide expanse of salt flats that covers around 30,000 acres. Now these 30,000 acres of salt are remnants of a lake called Lake Bonneville that existed a very long time ago and covered essentially the entire state of Utah. It's likely that you've seen movies, TV shows, music videos filmed here in the salt flats as it is a very cinematic and picturesque place to get your picture taken. Now, in terms of how to get here, Wendover is the closest city to the Salt Flats, about 20, 30 minutes away. Most folks, when they come out here, are coming from Salt Lake City, and there's a rest stop on I-80 westbound, which is a very popular spot for folks to get off and to walk on the Salt Flats, to drive on it if it's dry. The westbound rest stop, where I prefer the ideal spot, is the Bonneville Speedway Point. This is the spot where cars come to get the land speed records and you get just terrific views of the mountains and of a vast flat area. Each year, the Utah Salt Flats Racing Association puts on some epic events that are housed right here in Utah at the Bonneville Salt Flats. Some of the fastest, most dynamic and incredible vehicles ever made come here to Utah to put their machines to the test. One of the reasons why they come here is the Salt Flats themselves flat smooth and lend themselves as an ideal runway to epic speed machines. The current land speed record was actually set right here in 1997 at an unholy speed of 763 miles an hour. Coming out to the salt flats is obviously a ton of fun, but if you do, make sure the conditions are ideal, meaning if it's rained or if it's going to rain, it's not worth coming out here. But if you are coming out here and it is dry, enjoy the awesome conditions and channel your inner Mario and Dreddy to see how fast you can go. Everything you see here in the Bonneville Salt Flats is a remnant of or somehow connected to the Great Salt Lake. When you drive from Salt Lake City to the Bonneville Salt Flats, on your right as you're going westbound will be the Great Salt Lake. The Great Salt Lake is obviously a mixture of the state of Utah. It has very important environmental benefits to the state of Utah. In certain parts of the Great Salt Lake you will see are bright pink. The northern part of the state has a specific type of algae that turns the water pink. And one of the most beautiful spots within the state of Utah is to visit the Great Salt Lake Causeway, which is a railway that separates the northern part of the state from the southern half and you get a very beautiful pink and blue contrast that stands out and is very pretty. Places like this causeway and the spiral jetty, which is a spot in northern Utah, are very beautiful and unique looking landmarks that stand out in the Great Salt Lake area. One of the coolest times to come to the Bonneville Salt Flats 
is either after it's rained or in the spring after a season of a lot of snow and rain and precipitation in Utah. That's what creates a mirror effect. It allows the water to stay on the flats and create a reflection of the sky, the mountains, the surrounding area. Those of you who are willing to get up early enough can see a awesome treat when you come to the Bonneville Salt Flats during sunrise. As spectacular and amazing as the sunsets are in the salt flats, the sunrises are even better. That pink color contrasted against the salt flats provides a landscape that's almost like an artist painting a picture on a canvas with spectacular pinks and oranges contrasted against blues and white of the salt flats. If you're looking for a one-of-a-kind, beautiful natural experience, it's hard to do better than the Bonneville Salt Flats. There are five national parks within the state of Utah. The five national parks in Utah are commonly referred to as the Mighty Five. Arches, Bryce, Canyonlands, Capitol Reef, and Zion. There are a lot of positive reasons to come and see a national park. Obviously, the beauty is more preserved. Sometimes the sites are more awesome and grand. However, there are some drawbacks that prevent visitors from wanting to flock to national parks. One of those is crowds. These places in Utah and across the world are national parks for a reason. It means they're immensely popular. It means the sites are very beautiful. It also means that it attracts millions of other people to come to these spots. I would strongly urge you to consider coming to national parks all the same. Also, not all national parks have the same traffic. Of the five national parks within the state of Utah, you have national parks like Canyonlands or Capitol Reef National Park, fewer folks go there to visit, so it's much more likely you have your own spot. It's important to recognize that you also are a visitor to a national park, and as badly as you'd love to have that view of Angel's Landing or Delicate Arch or Thor's Hammer to yourself with no other people in your photos or no other people in your footage, just remember that there are other people who want that same shot as well, so do your best to be courteous. Crowds don't matter just so long as the visitors show courtesy respect for themselves and respect for the park. Most of the people there are quiet, respectful, and they love these sites just like you do, and they have every right to be there just like you do. So just remember that if you're ever discouraged about crowds and realize that the crowds do not take away from the experience and the national parks are still worth seeing. How you visit these parks is at your discretion. One thing that I can guarantee is that you'll love them and you'll appreciate the beauty of Utah National Parks like millions of people do when they come here to visit. We obviously don't have time to see everything. And if you're a traveler, you're not gonna have unlimited time either. And the parks that I'm going to be highlighting in particular are Arches National Park, Rice Canyon National Park, Capitol Reef, and Zion National Park. But please, please do not neglect Canyonlands National Park. So obviously I'm a great lover of Canyonlands as well, but sadly, we just don't have time to cover it all. And I'm hopeful and confident that you'll fall just as much in love as I am with Utah's national parks. They're beautiful and they're popular for a reason and I look forward to showing you why. If God is a stonemason, then Arches National Park is the back room of his workshop. There's a reason why many people consider Arches National Park not only the most beautiful national park in the West, but in possibly the entire country. 
when you see views like this, it just reminds you of how stunning this place is. This is the Park Avenue trailhead right towards the entrance of Arches National Park. Views like this are stunning and really all too common once you're inside Arches National Park. You can't go five minutes without seeing a view that will make your jaw drop. It's humbling to be in such an amazing place, which is why you need to put Arches on the top of your list of things to come and see when you're here in Utah. Arches has the highest density of natural stone arches in the world. In total, there are over 2,000 arches here in Arches National Park. Another really cool thing about Arches National Park is just how easy it is to get around. The main road that you use to get into Arches National Park is about 18 miles long from the start of the visitor's entrance to the end of the Devil's Garden at the very back end of the park. What you're looking at here is the most distinguishable picture in all of Utah. It's likely that if you spend time coming to Arches or Utah, then you come here to see this view. This is Delicate Arch. You'll see postcards with this image, with this arch. And it's the state symbol for a reason. Not only is Delicate Arch the most famous arch here within Arches National Park, it's probably the most famous arch in the entire world. When you come to Utah, and if you're anywhere in the state, take a look at the car with the Utah license plate. You'll see one of two images, either a skier with the motto, the greatest snow on earth, or a red rock arch, which is delicate arch. In order to get to delicate arch, it's a little bit of a hike that climbs for a short period. It can be a little bit strenuous, but if you have hiked normal trails in the past, you probably should be just fine. Depending on the season that you come here, you could have this place to yourself or share it with a few hundred friends. Being here in winter actually is pretty cool because you have the red rock of the sandstone contrasted against the snow. The things you see, the natural elements, are almost like works of art. When you think of Utah, you see delicate art. And when you, when you come to Delicate Arch, you understand why Utah is such a beautiful state. Of all the really cool, unique sites that you can come and see here in Arches, Double Arch, which you see here behind me, is one of the coolest and most unique. This actually may be my favorite site in the entire park. The Double Arch Trail is about a 0.8 round trip trail. It's very close to a parking lot, and it takes you underneath Double Arch. Now, it may sound a little bit silly, but one of the reasons why I think this place is so rad is that you get underneath it, and to me, it kind of looks like a monster that's sprawling or a giant spider. Maybe I've just seen one too many monster movies, but that's one of the reasons I love it, is it looks like a giant monster that's taking over the world. Again, the Double Arch may be my favorite site here. There are other sites that are maybe more famous, but come underneath it and you'll see how unique and how beautiful it is. Moab sits in the shadow of Arches National Park. Moab, Utah is one of the most unique cities, not only in the state of Utah, but in the entire West and in the entire United States. When it comes to adventure, when it comes to doing things in the outdoors, there may not be a city on earth that rivals Moab. This is such a city with an emphasis on outdoor fun that you'll want to get in on the act yourself, even if you're not overly athletic or overly adventurous, Moab is a great home base. You're close to Arches National Park, Canyonlands, Dead Horse Point Overlook. You're very close to world famous kayaking, climbing. So the, really the world is your oyster when you come here. There's another part about Moab that is world renowned and that is the biking, both the road biking and the mountain biking. There are mountain bike trails here that are some of the most technical and difficult in the entire world. The most technical trail is called Slick Rock. And again, this is a mountain biking trail that's known throughout the entire world. You don't have to be an adrenaline junkie to enjoy Moab. You can come here and just view and appreciate the national parks, the red rocks, eat good food, and just enjoy the ambiance of a very relaxed, 
and laid back atmosphere in nature. Moab is definitely a place you should come and check out for its proximity of the national parks alone. There's a lot to offer and there's a lot to do. Visiting this park and seeing this landscape is really unlike anything you've ever experienced in the world. This is an immensely popular national park. There are a lot of people here, especially in the summer, but you'd be surprised just how big this place is and how easy it is to find your own corner by yourself. When you come to Arches, you're stepping back into history. When you see the way that these canyons were formed millions of years ago, Utah is beautiful for many reasons. And maybe the top of that list is because of Arches National Park. Tucked away in southwestern Utah is located one of Utah's most magical places, and that is a spot called Bryce Canyon National Park. Bryce Canyon National Park is immediately recognizable for anyone who comes here to visit. But of all five Utah National Parks, Bryce Canyon is actually the smallest, but that doesn't mean it doesn't pack a picturesque punch. In fact, you only need to be standing here for one second to just be hypnotized by how magical and beautiful it is. Bryce Canyon is known for its Hoodoo Field Amphitheater that hits you when you come here. For me, it was like standing in front of an entire stadium full of people. I am at the very appropriately named Inspiration Point, which is one of the several excellent viewpoints here that gives you a very scenic view of the amphitheater and of all the hoodoos. One of the things I've really loved about coming to Bryce Canyon is not only observing the hoodoos and the amphitheater here from the outer rim, but it also gives you the opportunity to climb down into the amphitheater and to walk in and among the hoodoos. But once you go down and among them, you are struck just at how imposing and large and beautiful they are. Of all the many hoodoos that you do see here in Bryce Canyon, one is definitely the most famous. It's the one you'll see on postcards and that is called Thor's Hammer. Thor's Hammer is a giant and imposing picturesque hoodoo. A very popular time to come to the national park is as you're seeing for sunrise. The sun rises directly behind the hoodoos that gives this beautiful orange pinkish glow that is a very, very beautiful sight. Bryce is at elevation. We're about 8,000 feet here. And so it gets much colder than it would in other parts of southern Utah. So just take that into account. I'm here in, in mid to late May, and it was 26 degrees in the morning. So it will be very, very cold. My favorite hikes here have been the Navajo Loop, the Queens Garden, and the Outer Rim Trail. The Outer Rim Trail, even if you don't like hiking a whole lot, is worth seeing because it gives you the perspective of the amphitheater from the very ridge of the canyon, which is a must see. Obviously, it's worth coming to see Bryce Canyon. And when you do soak in the views of the hoodoos, try and make it here for a sunrise. One of the most picturesque and beautiful sights in the entire country. Yes, it's a national park, so it's not like it doesn't have notoriety, but in my opinion, Capitol Reef is the most underrated national park in Utah. It's like the member of a celebrity family with a lot more popular siblings. When you talk about Arches, Bryce, Canyonlands, and especially Zion, a lot of people forget about how nice and how beautiful Capitol Reef National Park is. One of the reasons why I love this park so much is because it's so big. You have so many spots here that are at your disposal. The spot I'm at now is the Hickman Bridge Trail, one of the most beautiful natural bridges that you can see. The trailhead is located not too far away 
from the Capitol Reef Visitor Center in the historic Fruta District. It's the place with the barns, the horses. If you go there at the right time, you can get some fresh made apple or blueberry pie, world famous pies. If you are considering coming to Utah and if national parks are your thing, you have your options here in this state. But don't forget about Capitol Reef National Park because it's known for being one of the most under the radar national parks. It offers you beautiful sites like the Pectol Pyramids, the Hickman Bridge, Temple of the Sun, Temple of the Moon, and you can enjoy these places in relative solitude. Here I am at the Hickman Bridge and I have it to myself. And those are just a few of the things that you have on offer when you come and visit Capitol Reef. Closest cities to Capitol Reef are either Torrey or Bicknell. On one side and on the other side, you have places like Caneville and Hanksville. The Temple of the Sun and the Temple of the Moon are two iconic rock formations on the edge of Capitol Reef National Park. You really get an idea of scale the closer you get up to each one of these rock formations. The Temple of the Sun is 500 feet high and the Temple of the Moon is 400 feet high. Now in terms of getting here, it's not exactly straightforward to get to the Temple of the Sun and the Temple of the Moon. You have to take a road called the Cathedral Valley Road. It's actually part of a larger, very scenic Cathedral Valley Loop. It's kind of an off-road drive, but if the conditions are good, you can probably get here in almost any vehicle. You're gonna to wanna to take the Cathedral Valley Road in the Caneville Wash. You're gonna be on that road for a little over an hour, and you're driving on washboard roads, which sound a lot worse for your car than it is. It's going to be loud and bumpy, but nothing your vehicle can't handle. If it is raining or threatening to rain, you should definitely reconsider your travel plans. This is not a very good place to be stuck, given the fact that there are no amenities. And it will take you eventually to the edge of Capitol Reef National Park, where you'll join the Cathedral Valley Loop Road. This is one of the best places for photography and videography. The Temple of the Sun and Temple of the Moon stand out in an isolated valley and they shoot up and you can get amazing perspectives from all over the valley. When you are here, make sure to explore farther back behind the Temple of the Moon for really cool and unique photography locations. In my opinion, this is one of the most beautiful places in all of Utah and it rests just on the edge of Utah's most underrated national park, Capitol Reef. If you do make time to come all the way out here, make sure to tell someone where you're going when you'll be back, bring plenty of water and have enough gas in your car to make it there and back, and you'll be very glad you did. For me, this site is not only the most iconic spot in within Capitol Reef, but it's probably one of my favorite spots inside the entire state of Utah. Another cool thing about this spot is that it's relatively low traffic, so when you do come here at any time of the day, it's likely that you have it to yourself. Capitol Reef is a large national park. There are a lot of different areas, but to the extent that you are in this area, you should do your best to try and visit the Temple of the Sun and the Temple of the Moon because you will be rewarded with terrific and amazing views. Capitol Reef National Park is a geologic wonder that reveals changes to the earth. The park was proclaimed a national monument on August 2nd, 1937 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt to protect narrow canyons displaying evidence of ancient sand dune deposits of unusual scientific value. Consider putting Capitol Reef on your places to come and visit because you will not regret it and it's one of the most beautiful places on earth.
Zion National Park is arguably the marquee national park when it comes to not only the state of Utah, but in the entire United States. Zion is located not far from the southern Utah city of St. George, about 30 to 45 minutes and an easy drive if you're coming from places like Arizona or Las Vegas. Zion is known for its incredible towering cliffs that you see immediately upon entering the national park. The closest real city to Zion National Park is a very small and charming city called Springdale. Springdale is essentially right next door to the park, arguably inside of it. Depending on where you look, this past year, Zion surpassed places like the Grand Canyon and the Great Smoky Mountains as the most visited and popular national park in the entire country. Yes, it's busy. In fact, this is the Disneyland of national parks. Yes, you're gonna see a lot of other people here. Yes, you may be waiting in traffic lines and have other people in your video and photo. But trust me when I tell you, it's absolutely worth it. And if you work hard enough, you can find your own little spot of Zion National Park like I found here. This is the Zion Canyon Overlook, a very easy and picturesque hike that is just past the scenic Mount Carmel Tunnel. In terms of how to get around, it's pretty straightforward. If you're coming to visit Zion in the main popular season, you actually can't drive through one of the most popular parts of the park. You're obligated to take a shuttle. Now, the good thing about the shuttle is that it's they run very frequently, and you can take the shuttle even from outside the park in Springdale. If you're visiting Zion in the off season, i.e. the winter time, you can actually drive through all the parts of the park, which is highly recommended since you get some incredible perspectives of the park behind the wheel. You love nature. If you're a fan of national parks, you cannot miss Zion National Park. And I know what you may be thinking. It can't be that good. Everyone else goes there. It's gonna be a nightmare. There's gonna be too many people. I won't have any fun. Don't buy into that. Don't get cute and think that you're, you're too good for Zion because so many other people come here and any outdoor lover or nature lover or just lover of any beautiful thing will lose themselves in the beauty of Zion National Park. Among the most popular sites and attractions here in Zion are the hikes like Angel's Landing, the Narrows, Canyon Junction, the Watchman Trail, the list goes on and on. Zion National Park is obviously popular for a reason. It offers you some of the most terrific and fantastic views. Maybe the most famous hike in the entire Zion National Park is Angel's Landing. Angel's Landing is that hike that gives you that classic viewpoint of the canyons that just opens up. It's beautiful, it's famous, it's likely one of the reasons why folks come to Zion National Park in such high numbers. I've just finished the Angel's Landing hike and one of the things I wanted to do with this video was to look at some of the things you hear about this hike and see how the myth matches the reality. Angel's Landing is not only one of the most famous, but one of the most infamous hikes in Zion National Park. That's because you hear a lot of stories and rumors about how scary it is, about how difficult it is. What I want to do now is to talk about what you hear, tell you what my experience was having just climbed it. The main thing you hear about Angel's Landing when you come here is that it is, in air quotes, the most dangerous hike in the world. And YouTube and Instagram are flooded with clickbait videos that show how dangerous and scary the hike is with precipitous drops on all sides. A lot of the scary stuff you hear about this hike in terms of heights was in my opinion a little bit overblown. At no point during the hike did I ever feel unsafe, unsecure. Yes, it's very very important that you be careful, that you don't be careless, you take your time and go slow. Now if you have a fear of heights that's that's another thing. This probably won't be your favorite hike to do. One thing that you hear about Angel's Landing that absolutely is true is that it is physically very rigorous. You're climbing up a lot of rock, you're sometimes scrambling up loose rock, sand, and you're going to want to be physically fit to do this hike. 
also take your time as well it's absolutely not a race there are going to be folks in front of you there will be folks behind you be courteous too when you're hiking to yield the right of way to folks who need it and so that everyone can get up and down the mountain safely Another thing you hear about this hike is that it is very, very populated. There are a lot of people on the hike. One of the things that's helped with the traffic is the lottery system. In order to hike Angel's Landing, you actually need to sign up for a lottery months in advance to get your tickets. It's such a popular hike and there were so many folks climbing it that the numbers on the trail became unsafe and they instituted this lottery system, which is good in terms of getting here. There are a lot fewer folks than there used to be, but it may make it trickier for you to actually get the chance to come and do this hike because you need to register in advance. There is an opportunity to do a day before lottery and your chances of getting those may not be very good, but it gives you kind of a last gasp chance to try and do the Angel's Landing hike. As cool and as neat as Angel's Landing is, don't feel too bad if you miss out on the chance to, to climb Angel's Landing because there are actually a number of different spots in the park that would give you, depending on who you ask, arguably better perspectives. The other marquee view that is arguably better than Angel's Landing is the observation point accessible through the West Rim hike. Now this hike itself is pretty long and, and pretty close inside green until you get to the viewpoint. But once you get to the viewpoint, you have an outstanding view, basically the same view that you get at Angel's Landing. However, nearly a thousand feet higher. In fact, you can see Angel's Landing from this viewpoint and your perspective is a lot wider and grander and arguably better. To the extent that you're able to get a lottery ticket, you're physically fit and don't have a fear of heights, you should absolutely put Angel's Landing on your list of things to do here in Zion National Park. It will be an unforgettable experience. When you make it to the top, enjoy your lunch, say hi to a squirrel and enjoy what is one of the most beautiful views in the entire southwest. There are a variety of hikes when you come to Zion National Park, those ranging from very strenuous and extreme to soft, easy and casual. One of the hikes that I've enjoyed most is a simple and small hike called the Parus Trail. The Parus Trail starts from Shuttle Stop 1 and ends at Shuttle Stop 3. It's an entirely paved sidewalk that gives you excellent views of what you're seeing behind me, which is the Watchman Peak. This peak you're seeing behind me is one of the most famous and signature mountains here in Zion National Park. And why I love this trail so much is it gives you excellent views of it. Come and appreciate the hiking trails, the Virgin River, and it's very likely that you'll fall in love with this national park. There's a reason why four million people every year come here to visit. All you have to do is to look around. It does go without saying that if you're going to visit this part of Utah, Southern Utah, if you are an avid fan of national parks, of nature, you need to come to Zion National Park. I know what you're thinking. If you don't like crowds, if you don't want to get swallowed up in a group of tourists, this may not be your cup of tea, but trust me when I tell you that you can find your own spot here and it is absolutely worth coming to see. If you are coming to this spot of Utah, make sure to visit Zion National Park. You won't regret it. It will be one of the most beautiful and exciting experiences that you'll ever have. Among the most notable features of Utah 
The snow of winter may be the most famous thing about the state. There may be no other place on earth that is better to experience in winter than Utah. In 1985, a skier and the slogan, the greatest snow on earth began to appear on Utah license plates. It's not just the slogan, there's actually science behind it. According to research done by University of Utah scientists, there are a combination of climate conditions that create the perfect snow. In other words, the greatest snow on earth. The science can be boiled down to one single word, flotation. Flotation is essentially when snow water content causes lighter snow to fall upon heavier snow. In normal terms, it creates ideal powder for things like skiing and snowboarding. For a place that has the greatest snow on earth, it sure does get a lot of it. From December to March, approximately one foot of snow falls every five days in the state of Utah. Skiing and snowboarding tend to be the most popular winter activities in the state, but you have a number of options to enjoy the snow if those aren't your thing, like tubing, snowmobiling, even hiking. Even if you don't like going out in the snow yourself or if you're a little sensitive to the cold, which admittedly can be a little harsh for non-Utahns, the snow is just beautiful to look at. When the snow falls, it creates a beautiful winter landscape that is a picturesque scene. The mountains of northern Utah, specifically the Wasatch Range, stretch across the northern half of the state. And when these peaks are snow-capped, there's really nothing better to look at. It's worth coming here to experience because you're gonna get that prototypical winter wonderland feel, and it'll be something that you fall in love with, even if you don't like the cold. The Midway Ice Castles are a must-see winter site that can be found in the small picturesque town of Midway, Utah. There are a team of about 20 to 40 ice artists that get together that design the ice castles that you see here. The artists grow roughly 12,000 icicles every day over the course of two months before the ice castles are ready for visitors to come and enjoy. Being here, it's hard to describe and frankly hard to capture on video just how cool and unique the Midway ice castles are. There are tunnels, slides, fountains, thrones, arches, and, and many more. If you can swing it, it is definitely worth coming by and seeing the Midway ice castles at night. That way you can see it all lit up. Now, some important facts about folks who want to come here and visit the ice castles. They are available for visitors only in a very specific and short time frame. The ideal time to come here to view the ice castles is mainly in January and February of every year. A lot of that depends on the winter that Utah's having. Generally, Utah winters are very cold with a lot of snow in January, February, so it may not be an issue, but it is worth checking in advance if you're coming all the way to Midway to view the ice castles, just to make sure that the ice castles are open and that the weather has been agreeable enough for the artists and designers to make the ice castle. If you are lucky enough to see the Midway ice castles, you'll have, frankly, one of the most beautiful winter experiences. Park City is one of the most well-known and wealthiest towns, not only in the state of Utah, but in the entire United States. The population of Park City is around 8,000, but the number of people who come to this city balloons well up past 50, 60, 70,000. The vibe you get when you come to Park City is very much that of a mountain ski town. One of the best things to see when you are in Park City is Main Street. Main Street is very well known for its art galleries, its restaurants, its culture. You do kind of get an artsy feel when you are here in Park City. It's kind of like Utah's hipster city. One of the things I love most about Park City is on Main Street, the art galleries. Art actually plays a really cool and important role here in Park City. There are several art galleries. Most of them are free and open every day. You can go in there and enjoy art take pictures, and even buy a piece of art if it suits you. In 2002, Salt Lake City was awarded the Olympic Winter Games. A lot of the major ski events actually took place 
here in Park City since it's home to so many world-class ski resorts. Two of the most well-known and most famous ski resorts in the entire world, Deer Valley and Park City Resort, are actually housed right here in Park City among several other ski resorts. If you are a skier, this is essentially a skier's paradise. If you have time and you're able to come out a little bit on the exterior of Park City, you come to this Olympic Museum. You can learn all types of history about old skiing equipment, snowboarding equipment. There's also a skiing hall of fame there. Skiing is such a really important and historical uh, thing about the state of Utah. It's just a part of the culture. The northern part of the state is just surrounded by so many mountains and canyons. There are 14 ski resorts in the entire state and the northern part of Utah, and many of those ski resorts are some of the best in the world. Park City really is the place to come, and the cherry on top is the Olympic elements. So you can come here and see what the Olympic medals look like, what the Olympic Games were like once they were here in Park City. Aside from world-class ski resorts, there are also world-class hotels. Within the state of Utah, there are only a handful of five-star resorts, and most of them are actually right here in Park City. Whether it's the St. Regis Hotel, Stein Erickson Lodge, these are really beautiful and incredible looking hotels right off of the mountain that allow folks to ski right from their hotel lobby. Park City is home to the largest film festival in the entire United States, the Sundance Film Festival. Each January, 50,000 celebrities, movie makers, and film fans flock to Park City, Utah for the festival. Right now, I'm in front of the Egyptian Theater, one of the most famous theaters in the entire city and a real hub of the film festival. If you're a movie fan, then it's likely that some of your favorite films were originally screened here. You don't necessarily need to come to Park City in January to experience movie magic here in Park City. The Egyptian Theater is open year-round and you can always catch a movie here if you're in town. So in summary, Park City is truly an interesting and unique place. It's probably the most trendy city in the entire state of Utah. You get the trendiness married with the nature. You have the mountains, the snow, the art, the culture for a really cool and interesting feel. Come to Park City, enjoy the art, Enjoy the culture. Utah is a place that obviously has a lot of very well-known tourist destinations. It may be therefore surprising that I'm choosing to highlight a place in this video that you've likely never heard of. Wayne County, and specifically the Hanksville, Utah area, is a very unique and special place. One unique feature of this part of Utah is that the landscape here is something straight out of a science fiction movie. It's not just the red rocks or the mountains that you see, there's an extraterrestrial alien-like feel that sets this particular place apart. Those travelers who not only want to see beautiful sights, but those that have a beautiful uniqueness or almost a beautiful strangeness or desolate nature to them should come to Wayne County because you'll have your options here. What I am encouraging you to do is that if you, when you do come to Utah, visit some of the smaller off the beaten path places, ask the locals, and you will be highly rewarded for your ability to get off the beaten path.
Like many of the spots here in the Hanksville, Wayne County area, the spire is a spot that's totally isolated. When you come here, it's likely that you'll have this entire spot to yourself. One of the reasons why this site is so special is that this spire sits totally isolated, surrounded by rock walls. Areas like this are special for a number of reasons. Some of my favorite sites I've seen in all of my travels are places that are not only beautiful, but unique to look at, different, they stand out. And this spire certainly is that. It stands out and it's very unique. I can't recall anything looking like this at any place I've ever visited. The hike to get out to the spire is pretty straightforward. On SR92 heading towards Capitol Reef from Hanksville, there's like a barn or cattle corralling area. You can stop there. There's not an official turnout, but you can stop there just off the side of the road. There's enough dirt and head directly north. You'll see another impressive spire called the Angel of Death on your left. Keep heading that direction. You'll turn and see the little tip of the spire poking out over a hill until you eventually reach this spot. When you do come out here, please be respectful of the land. In order to get to this exact spot, you can drive to a certain point, but then you are required to walk or bike the rest of the way. Now that's not only for your protection, but it's for the protection of the land here. So please do follow the rules and try not to drive directly to the spire. This spire was one of the main reasons why I wanted to come to Hanksville, wanted to come to Wayne County. This place is so cool, it's so unique, and it's one of the most unique places that I've ever seen in my life. This random spot in the middle of a small town, Hanksville, Utah. If you want that experience, come to this part of Utah, you will definitely get it. Come and see the spire. You'll never forget it. In a place as relatively under the radar as Hanksville and Wayne County, it's hard to really say that anything is the most famous or most notable site. Factory Butte is a prominent structure that is easily visible, not only within the area of Hanksville, but in the surrounding areas as well. It's impossible to miss whether you're taking SR24 out of Hanksville through to Capitol Reef or coming into Hanksville from Goblin Valley, Green River. One of the reasons why I love Factory Butte so much is it actually looks like a castle. It's just rising up out of the earth. Like a lot of the other sites here in Hanksville, it has a, an extraterrestrial feel to it. It doesn't look like this belongs on planet Earth. It's like aliens live on the inside. Getting to Factory Butte is an absolute breeze. You can take your nav on your phone and get directly to this spot. Just type in Factory Butte and it takes you to this viewpoint. If you are coming to this part of Utah, it's worth visiting Factory Butte, not only because it's probably the most famous site, at least here in the Hanksville area, excluding Capitol Reef. Factory Butte is just one of many sites here in the Hanksville and Wayne County area that is worth seeing. You won't regret it. state with as many beautiful parks as Utah has, it's actually a surprise to some that the state parks here rival the national parks in beauty. Where I'm at right now is Goblin Valley State Park. This area is world famous for these rock formations behind me they call hoodoos. Goblin Valley is really neat and unique because once you pay to get into the park, you can walk in and amongst the hoodoos. And there are several really popular hiking trails that can be found right here in Goblin State Park. Right at the entrance of Goblin Valley State Park, you have an impressive viewpoint of all the hoodoos. 
and when you come here it's almost a little bit eerie because it feels like you've left planet earth on the topic of other planets there's actually a mars research station down here in this area and nasa uses this research station to recreate conditions on places like mars and other planets and so there are scientists that come here because the terrain and rock formations resemble that of what you would find on Mars and other planets. One very important thing to mention as you're coming here to Goblin Valley is to be respectful of the rock formations themselves. When you come here, you can walk in and among the hoodoos. You can go up and touch the rock formations. And although that's permitted, you just wanna be careful. When you do come to Goblin Valley, you'll be struck by the beauty here. You won't forget this look. It's really unlike any place on this earth and more resembles another planet. Getting off the beaten path and visiting some of these local spots gives you the opportunity to have these spots yourself. Places like Hanksville are special and offers you some sites that you won't see anywhere else in this world or maybe any other world. It's good advice, frankly, anywhere you're at to get off the beaten path. And travelers who do so in Utah are very generously rewarded. Cache Valley is not only the most beautiful place in Utah, but it's the most beautiful place in the world. Now, full disclosure, I may not be the most objective when it comes to that statement, given the fact that Logan inside Cache Valley is the place where I was born and raised, but allow me to make the case as to why Cache Valley and Logan City should definitely be on your list of places to visit during your Utah adventure. The valley is known for its stunning landscapes. Cache Valley is surrounded by two very impressive and imposing mountain ranges, the Wellsville and the Bear River Mountain Range. Depending on when you visit Cache Valley, the surroundings will look very different. For example, in the springtime, you'll see snow-capped mountains, green rolling hills, and wildflowers. In the winter time, you see a winter wonderland, the true snow globe come to life. And in the autumn time, you see awesome and, and vibrant fall colors. In other words, there's no bad time to come to Cache Valley. The colors of Cache Valley are very vibrant. Whether it's the colors of spring, the colors of fall, the colors of winter, each one of these seasons has a very distinct look and feel. I could drop you in one part of Cache Valley at a different time of the year, and the look and feel is totally different. Fall is one of the most beautiful times to come to anywhere in Utah, especially in northern Utah. You're in the canyons, in the mountains, anywhere from October 3rd to October 15th or so, you're going to see prime leaf color changing. You'll see leaves that are yellow, leaves that are brown, leaves that are red. Where I'm at now is a place called Tony Grove in Cache Valley. Beautiful golden leaves. Probably the only bad thing about the fall is that it doesn't last very long. You'll see the colors throughout the month of October, but you'll really only see those eye-popping yellows during about 10 to 15 day span in October. I would say don't miss those, and some of the best spots you can go are in Logan Canyon, Sardine Canyon, the Alpine Loop in Provo, Provo Canyon, but again, any canyon 
um, that certain day will get you stellar results like you see here. Spring colors are in full force like the Albion Basin and several canyons between Little Cottonwood Canyon, Alta, all the way through Ogden and Cache Valley. In a place as dry and arid as Utah, you may not figure that the state has as much color and luscious green as it does. And folks who come here and see that are very pleased. Continue far enough up through Logan Canyon and you will eventually arrive at a place called Bear Lake. Bear Lake is a very famous lake on the Utah-Idaho border that has been nicknamed the Caribbean of the Rockies. The water in Bear Lake is very vibrant and very blue, which is why it earned that nickname. It has reminded travelers of the water in places like the Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, or other countries inside the Caribbean. Just be warned, however, that the water temperature is not at all like the Caribbean. It's very cold, which actually offers a very refreshing contrast to the very hot summer heat that you get up here in Northern Utah. The Wellsville Mountains for me are the most beautiful mountains in the world. The Wellsville Mountains aren't the highest, but for their height, they're some of the most steep, and that's what gives them their very picturesque look. Prominent views of Cache Valley will almost always include the Logan LDS Temple and the Old Main Tower. These two towers of Logan stand as landmarks. It doesn't matter where you are inside Cache Valley, you'll most likely be able to see Old Main Tower, the Logan LDS Temple. You'll also be able to notice the Logan Tabernacle, another tower that stands out in the valley. Cache Valley is known for a lot more than just its landscapes and natural beauty. Logan, Cache Valley's main city, is a small but very charming city full of fun activities to do, great places to eat, and interesting things to explore. Logan is also home to Utah State University, and it also happens to sit on one of the most uniquely beautiful and picturesque campuses in the entire country. You can come here and check out Old Main, is what you're seeing behind me, Old Main Tower. Walk out on the quad and explore the beautiful campus. While you are on campus, make use of your time by going and eating some world-famous Aggie ice cream, which is routinely voted the best ice cream in the entire state. The Aggie Bloomin is their most famous flavor, but they have a ton of other ones that you'll love. You can also check out a USU Aggie men's basketball game who play in the Spectrum. It's a very fun and loud, exciting environment. Outside of USU, Logan also has a lot to offer in the form of its historic Main Street. If you're lucky enough to be in Cache Valley, during the early summertime, you just might be able to catch the Tularettes in concert from the Tuller School of Dance. The Tuller School of Dance is a preeminent dance studio based right here in Cache Valley, located right on Main Street. Cache Valley sits in the northern part of Utah, about an hour and a half north from the state's biggest city, Salt Lake City. In order to get here, you just want to take Interstate I-15 North about an hour and get off on the Brigham City exit. Do yourself a favor and put Cache Valley on your list of places to visit while you are in Utah. I'm hopeful that if you do, you'll see why so many folks love this place so much and you just might fall in love with it yourself. If you travel far enough south in the state of Utah, you'll reach a really interesting part of the state, an incredibly beautiful place called Monument Valley. Now, full disclosure, Monument Valley is actually in Utah 
in Arizona, and of course, this is a Utah-only video. Monument Valley is an independent region called Navajo Nation. So when you do come here, you're technically not in Arizona or in Utah, you're in Navajo Nation, which is uh, an important thing to keep in mind. Some of the rules and laws and just ways of living are different, and it's important for you to understand and respect if you're coming here to visit. So even though many of the most famous sites here in Monument Valley are on the Arizona side, one of the main entrances to the park is actually in Utah. And some of the most cool and unique sites of Monument Valley can only be seen on the Utah side, which is why I thought it was important to, to highlight this very special and cool place. When you are here, there's a 17 mile loop that you can drive that gives you some of the most unique perspectives of the sites in the park, not only the sites of the Mittens, but a place called Three Sisters, John Ford Point. This has been a very famous area when it comes to shooting westerns. It's likely that your grandpa's favorite movies uh, starring John Wayne were probably shot and filmed right here in Monument Valley. A beautiful place, and it's a place that's shared by both Arizona and Utah. And it is certainly worth seeing whether you're coming from the Arizona side or the Utah side. Hollywood loves Utah. In fact, some of your most favorite movies have likely been filmed inside the state of Utah. Coming to this spot in particular is a very popular spot for a lot of the tourists who come to Utah. You can get to the Forrest Gump Hill viewpoint on your way to Monument Valley. The spot is located just a few minutes outside a very charming small town called Mexican Hat. The ideal time to come to this viewpoint is a little bit earlier in the morning. If you come in the afternoon, the sun will actually be setting behind you and you won't get that deep red rock look on the buttes. Do be careful, however, if you are trying to get that shot right in the middle of the road. So make sure to take a look in front of you and behind you just to make sure you're not distracting any oncoming traffic. Even though you may not be starring in any Hollywood movies in your future, that doesn't stop you from getting the movie experience by coming to some of these very famous locations where movies have been filmed. Monument Valley is a beautiful place to go and visit and it's certainly world famous. The best way to think about Valley of the Gods is Utah's own private version of Monument Valley. And actually, unlike Monument Valley, Valley of the Gods is a lot less known. So when you come here, you'll have most of the park by yourself. The mittens here and the rock formations are, in my opinion, every bit as beautiful as that you would see in Monument Valley. You'll see great sites like the Lady in the Bathtub and other really beautiful rock formations that are unique to this part of Southern Utah and the Southwest. Utah is a beautiful and big place, certainly too big for me to show you all of the cool, neat and unique places that make this state such a cool place to visit and live. In many ways, the secret is out. There are more people coming to Utah than there's ever been in the state's history. Each year, millions of people visit and even thousands of people choose to relocate to the state of Utah. As a current resident and native Utah, my message to those folks visiting or moving here is this. Welcome to the Beehive State. We hope that you love and appreciate the state of Utah as much as we locals do. As popular and as touristy as certain parts of Utah are becoming, you as a visitor will still have a chance to have your own unique 
part of the state to yourself. It's all on offer for you here in Utah. And the more you explore, the more you get off the beaten path, the more rewarded you are as a traveler. Whether you don't mind sharing a national park with thousands of other visitors, or whether you'd rather have your own secluded private experience in a canyon, on a mountain, in front of a river, there's certainly something for everyone here. And maybe it's time for you to find out what that is for you. As beautiful and as eye-popping as the natural sites are here, what means more to me is just how nice, warm, and accommodating the Utah people are as well. It's something hopefully you'll find when you come here to visit Utah as well. And I know I've been banging on this drum all video, but allow me to make the case one last time. I encourage you to come to Utah. Come to Utah to visit, come to Utah to live, come here to experience what makes this place so great. And I guarantee you'll fall in love with this place and you'll love it just as much as we Utahs do. Thank you.